Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a problem suggested by one of my viewers. Thank you for the suggestion. Draws funny line. So we're going to be solving a logarithmic equation, which is a really nice one. We have log 2x minus 5 divided by log x squared minus 8 equals 1 half. And we're going to be solving for x values. So in this case, uh, since the base was not specified, uh, I'll take it as base 10. That's what I always do in my videos. If the base is not written, it is base 10. Okay, so let's start by cross multiplying. We're going to multiply 2 times this and 1 times that. So it's going to give us 2 times log 2x minus 5 equals log x squared minus 8. Now cross multiplication and simplifying this expression is okay but one thing that we have to be very careful about with logs is the domain. You may come up with some x values but they may not satisfy the original equation or they may cause the expression to be undefined so on and so forth. So that's what we're gonna check. Uh, you can do the check first if you want uh, or you can check it later at the end. But let's talk about it briefly. So basically, I have 2x minus 5 inside. So 2x minus 5 needs to be greater than 0. That means x is greater than 5 halves. At the end, we're going to check our work against these. And x squared minus 8 also needs to be greater than 0. But not only that, our base is fine. It's base 10, so we're good on that. But we have log x squared minus 8 in the denominator. So it's at the bottom which means it can't be 0. When is log x squared minus 8 equal to 0? When x squared minus 8 is equal to 1. So that is problematic. So we're going to avoid that as well. So we do need an additional condition here. x squared minus 8 should not equal 1. And I have to include it because it's not included in x squared minus 8 is greater than 0. Make sense? If I had x squared minus 8 is less than 0 instead, then I wouldn't worry about 1 because it would not be uh, possible. Okay? Great. So let's go ahead and uh, solve this equation under those conditions. And remember, we have uh, what is called a power property with logs. So it says if you have log a to the n, you write it as n times log a. Again, any base is fine here. But uh, we have the opposite scenario. We have a coefficient, so we can make it an exponent. That's what we're going to do here. So we're going to move the 2 back. And we're going to kind of take it and put it up here as an exponent. So this becomes log 2x minus 5 to the second power equals log x squared minus 8. Awesome. Now since we have the log on both sides and the logarithm function is 1 to 1, which means if you have two outputs that are the same, they have to be coming from the same input. In other words, if you have f of a equals f of b in a one-to-one -one function, this implies a equals b. So in log function, ln function is, that it kind of looks like this, and it's always one-to-one, -one, always increasing. If, you know, sometimes it could be always decreasing. So let's go ahead and set the arguments, the insides equal to each other. 2x minus 5 squared equals x squared minus 8. So we're going to expand on the left-hand side, a minus b quantity squared, 4x squared, minus 20x, plus 25 equals x squared minus 8. Let's go ahead and put everything on the same side, 3x squared, minus 20x, 25 plus 8 is 33. Now, if you check the discriminant of this equation, you're going to notice something interesting, that you're going to find integer or rational solutions. In other words, this is factorable, but the coefficient of x squared is not 1. This is not monic, so it's better if we use the x method. What is the x method? So it's kind of interesting because I did not know about this method until one of the students, one of my students, taught me in class like, hey, here you go. There's a method, you know, uh, that you can use for these kinds of problems, which obviously they learned from uh, one of their teachers. But it's, it's interesting when you learn something from students because that always happens. Anyways, so here's how the X method works for those of you who are not familiar. Here's one thing. Uh, the first thing we're going to do 
for the x method. We're going to multiply a and c. So if you have ax squared plus bx plus c, you're trying to solve it, and a is different from 1. And you first start by multiplying a times c because that's a special number. So we're going to make a giant x symbol, and 3 times 33 is 99. I'm going to put that here. So the product goes here on top. And the sum is going to go at the bottom. And the sum is always the number in the middle, the coefficient, which is negative 20. Now, the process, the rest of this process is fairly easy. We're going to break down, uh, we're going to factor 99 into two numbers. So basically, we're looking for two numbers whose product is 99 and whose sum is negative 20. All right? Product is 99 the sum is negative 20. So it's kind of like this product goes here and sum goes here. Make sense? So we're going to find these numbers. And it shouldn't be too hard if you are familiar with factoring numbers. It wouldn't be too hard to find that negative 11 and negative 9 satisfy the criteria. Make sense? So how do we use those numbers? Well, there are parts of negative 20, so we're going to use it to break down the negative 20 like this. 3x squared, and it doesn't matter which one you use first because we have the commutativity. So I'm going to use 11x minus 11x minus 9x, and then plus 33. Alrighty? So this is our breakdown, and obviously this is equal to 0. Let's go ahead and factor this by grouping. That's what we're going to do next. So first group is going to be made up of these two terms. You can take out x. And inside, you're going to find 3x minus 11. The second group is going to be made up of these two things. Of course, don't forget to include the minus sign. And it's going to be a minus or negative 3. And inside the parentheses, we should find the same thing. That's what is so powerful about this x method. And then we're going to take out 3x minus 11, which is a common factor. And then x minus 3 is going to be the other one. And this is fairly easy. And from here, we get x equals 11 thirds and x equals 3 as our solutions. But wait a minute. Are these all the solutions? Or are there any other solutions? Or do they work? We have to check something. So let's go back to the beginning and remember our criteria. Our numbers have to satisfy this. So 2x minus 5, x must be greater than 5 halves, like 2.5. Well, if you check both of these numbers, they work. Greater than 5 halves. Good. What about the second one? Is x squared minus 8 positive? Okay, if x is 11 thirds or 3 in both cases, x squared minus 8 is positive. So second check. But the third one is a tricky one because x squared minus 8 should not equal 1, which means x should not equal 3 or negative 3. So we kind of fail on this one. x squared minus 8 does not equal 1. It implies x squared does not equal 9. But that's not the case, so we fail. Therefore, x equals 3 does not satisfy the criteria, and we end up with a single solution, which is x equals 11 thirds. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. And one more time, thank you for the suggestion. Until next time, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.